Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the new leaked Model 3 design, Cybertruck updates, Tesla's best sellers, and more, so let's get into it. And a special thanks to Spigen for sponsoring a portion of this video. First up today, Tesla is continuing to climb ranks for best-selling vehicles. Sometimes when Tesla ends up a best-seller in a European country, for example, it can be because it's the specific month and a quarter where Tesla finally exported a lot of cars. They're the best-seller because all of their cars shipped, but then the next month they aren't. However, this isn't always the case and is continuing to change. In November, over in Germany, Tesla delivered 10,819 vehicles. This makes it the second best monthly sales volume by Tesla since they started selling cars there. This this is a 92.7% increase in Tesla sales in Germany compared to November of 2021, and this record was only beaten by Tesla in September of this year, with 13,724 Model 3s and Ys sold. Overall, for the full year, Tesla has accumulated 52,462 sales in Germany, which is a 58.7% increase from the same time period last year. Even in Germany, known as one of the toughest auto markets, people keep buying Teslas. The Model Y in general is now on the path to become the fourth best-selling car in the world for 2022, most expected to become the best-selling car in the world in 2023, and the Model Y's popularity continues to grow in the UK. According to data from SMMT, Tesla delivered 4,229 Model Ys in the UK last month. The only car that beat it was a Nissan crossover SUV selling 5,636 units in the same time period. Here's a chart of the best-selling vehicles in the UK, with the Model Y creeping up in November. It's holding ninth for the full year and continuing to grow, and the most notable thing here is that this is a chart of all passenger vehicles, gas or electric. The Model Y is the only EV on this top 10 list. Electric cars are continuing to gain popularity and the Model Y is at the forefront of this popularity. Next up today, out of Giga Berlin, Tesla has been shipping their new Model Y colors. These are Quicksilver and Midnight Cherry Red and are the colors that can only be produced at Giga Berlin for the time being. So far, we've mainly seen Quicksilver in production and now Tesla is starting to display this color in showrooms in Germany and other places. This color looks great and really stands out in comparison to their other Midnight Silver Metallic parked next to it in a few of these photos. These photos are in Mannheim, but Tesla has these on display in a few different areas now. Here's a Quicksilver Model Y over in Belgium, and here's another in Denmark. We should be seeing these on the road with more regularity as they come out of Giga Berlin, and I'm excited to see it along with Midnight Cherry Red. I'm particularly excited for that red, and I hope that eventually Tesla can bring these new colors to the Model Y in the US. Next up today, we have new leaks and information about the revised Tesla Model 3. The Model 3 first came out in 2017, and it was a big deal. It was Tesla's first, more affordable vehicle, but Tesla has learned a lot since the Model 3 first launched. They've made small changes to the Model 3, but the bigger changes they've learned involve production as a whole, and have been implemented on the Model Y, especially at their newer factories. These include things like their large rear castings, but many are hoping to see a bit of a design change in the Model 3. In any case, last week it was reported that Tesla is working on Project Highland. This is their code name for the redesign of the Model 3, and the report says, quote, one focus of the redesign, codenamed Highland, is to reduce the number of components and complexity in the interior of the Model 3, while focusing on features that test the buyer's value, including the display, according to the people who asked not to be named because the revamp has not been announced. The main goal here is cost reduction, and these changes would go into effect in both of Tesla's factories that make the Model 3, Shanghai, and Fremont. Reportedly as well, this update is inspired by the Model S refresh, which revitalized that car while keeping the exterior largely the same. Now a lot more info has come out about the redesigned Model 3. First, OMG Tesla posted photos in a video of a Tesla Model 3 parked with Tesla manufacturer plates and coverings over the front and rear. This immediately launched a lot of speculation as to why Tesla has to cover part of a car that they've been shipping for five years now. The only pieces that stick out from these covers are the headlights, taillights, and charge port. If this is a refreshed Model 3, it's a lot of what many expect. It will bring very small changes, but some have pointed out that there may be a new camera inside the front headlight. It's tough to tell if that is actually what this is, but Tesla has been heavily rumored to be shipping hardware 4.0 on their cars soon. Reports said that they've also placed a massive order of their next-gen hardware 4.0 FSD chip with TSMC. Tesla has clearly gone in the direction of ditching all sensors in favor of cameras, but some have noted the lack of visibility in certain areas with Tesla's removal of ultrasonic sensors. Tesla could be introducing a new camera suite in the refreshed Model 3 to address any potential blind spots for full self-driving. In theory, a camera in each 
huge headlight like this could see oncoming traffic when making a turn better than a driver could. This would be a big improvement over current camera visibility, but does raise questions as to how Tesla will handle this if they're required for full self-driving, how will they give that to older vehicles? In any case, the spotting of this Model 3 could mean anything. It could be Tesla hiding cameras, hiding a completely changed front end design, or just trying to mess with us. They truly could be throwing a cover on an existing Model 3 just so people will see it and run with speculation. However, there's more evidence that makes this seem unlikely. Over at Tesla's Fremont factory, Tesla is making major changes to the Model 3 production line. Tesla filed for several revisions of Model 3 production lines, showing that GA3 will be reorganized for at least the next several months. The first application refers to Model 3 body fitting and light repair operations until May 1st, 2023. This will cost about $20,000. The second application refers to demolishing brake and roll equipment on Model 3 lines, demolishing supporting electric and mechanical utilities, and more. This will cost about $75,000. Overall, the expectation here is that Tesla is removing this old equipment in order to make space for new and improved manufacturing and testing equipment for a new Model 3. They have learned a lot from the Model Y, so the main redesign here should relate to manufacturing. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Spigen. Spigen has been making high quality phone cases for over 15 years and is now utilizing their expertise to expand their lineup to Tesla. My favorite product of theirs is the center console organizer, compatible with the Model 3 and Y. It has an ergonomic design and carbon fiber finish. It's very stable and glides smoothly in the center console. Then their hidden storage box, also available for the Model 3 and Y, fits under the armrest with 3M tape. It's durable and opens with one touch for easy access. This is a perfect way to utilize even more space in your center console. If you like car air fresheners by Febreze and Yankee Candle, but haven't been able to use them in your Tesla, Spigen makes this nifty adapter for the Model 3 and Y as well. It attaches with residue-free adhesive and sits perfectly into your invisible air vent. Lastly, they make a charging cable organizer fit for any Tesla. It has a modern look with a matte finish and helps you keep your cable from getting dirty or dusty. You can also customize if you want the outlet on the top or bottom. The kit includes everything you need to install it and it's very easy to put up. To check out any of these products for yourself, click the link in the description below. At the same time, when Tesla relaunched the Model S, they also went twofold. They completely updated the interior while improving manufacturing and introducing an entirely new battery pack. I expect that Tesla may do something similar here. Something that differentiates the new Model 3 and makes it new, but doesn't completely change functionality. If they completely updated the Model 3 interior as well, they'd have to do the same with the Model Y, which is already set to become the best-selling car in 2023. There's no real reason for them to change this substantially. And for Tesla more than any other company, if there's no impact impact on sales for them changing or improving their vehicle design, they usually won't do it. In any case, that white Model 3 that was spotted covered up wasn't the only one we've seen. Another red Model 3 was spotted near Tesla Palo Alto, covered in the exact same areas. Clearly, Tesla has something to hide here. I personally think it's a new camera suite. There's a reason they need to test drive these altered cars, and if it's really just a slightly altered bumper, there wouldn't be too much that they need to be out test driving on multiple cars. There's a change that they need to calibrate, so I really think this will be the main change Tesla does to the Model 3 design at the same time as they improve manufacturing. What are your thoughts though? What would you like to see changed on the Model 3, and what do you expect them to change? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Next up today, we talk a lot on this channel about Tesla's huge advantage when it comes to road trip charging. Their supercharger network is incredibly reliable, while all other EVs in the US have to rely on unreliable charging when it comes to road tripping. No brand has had incredibly sizable charging network plans, but now Ford is looking to change this. Ford announced this week that two thirds of their dealers are joining the Model E program. This program allows Ford dealers to invest in the future and become part of their EV transformation. There are two tiers to become EV certified, and each one requires a DC fast charger at the dealer. With two thirds of Ford's dealers going with the Model E program, there are a total of 1,920 dealers, which immediately would make Ford's network the largest DC fast charging network in the US with regards to locations when those are installed. Of course, it matters how many stalls are there, and right now they are only requiring one or two at these locations. Simply speaking of locations though, EVgo has 850 plus locations, Electrify America has 800 plus locations, and Tesla has just over 1,500 supercharger locations in the US. In theory, Ford should soon have 
have around 1,920 DC fast charging locations. But of course, quote, the number of chargers is a better metric. And other than Tesla and some of the more recent Electrify America stations, most charging networks only deploy a few chargers per station. The good news here though, is that 1,659 of these dealers will be deploying two chargers. So soon enough, Ford should be adding 3,500 DC fast chargers to their dealers throughout the US. Of course, the big issue here is the number of chargers per location. These could quickly fill up or be located in weird areas where dealerships are located, but it is a big step in Ford making their own charging network. 3,500 chargers should definitely help out with charging infrastructure, but I personally hope that many of these dealerships end up installing more chargers. It could lead to an actually competitive network closing in on Tesla's big lead. However, as always, Tesla is continuing to grow their network each day. It will take a lot of investment and quick expansion for other networks to catch up. I'm really curious to see how this develops, but glad to see Ford dealers investing in fast charging and EVs in general, regardless of the number of stalls in place at each location. Next up today, there have been a couple pieces of spec speculation for the Cybertruck recently. First is some development from video of the updated Cybertruck prototype that has been up for some time. It appears that the mid-gate window has the ability to drop down. It could just have no mid-gate window installed at the time of filming this on this particular prototype, but it really seems to be rolled down. That would be a big development here and would add a feature most haven't expected on this truck. We can also see in this video what the updated bed looks like without stainless steel inside. It also appears to have a division there for a door that will be where the under storage compartment is in the truck bed. Also worth noting that while we've mostly seen prototypes without a tonneau cover at this point, this one has it installed. This should be particularly important for aerodynamics. The other bit of speculation this week comes from the Peterson Museum. Their exhibit called Inside Tesla is currently on display and it includes the Cybertruck. Near the Cybertruck is the original concept art from Tesla's chief designer, Franz von Holzhausen, and it's remarkably similar to the real Cybertruck. One thing people have noticed though is that the Cybertruck drawing only has two doors. Of course, the real Cybertruck has four doors. So this has led to speculation that Tesla is planning a smaller Cybertruck. In the past, Elon Musk has talked about Tesla making a smaller version of the Cybertruck, but ultimately said that shrinking its design by even 3% would be too small. Eventually, Tesla may make a smaller Cybertruck, but I don't think there's much to this speculation. This was simply one of Franz's original Cybertruck design concepts, and Tesla adapted the truck from there. The final product, or final prototype at least, looks incredibly close to this. That said, maybe we'll get a smaller Cybertruck in the future, but I imagine it would still be with four doors. For now, let's focus on Tesla actually producing the original Cybertruck unveiled in 2019. Their supplier, Idra, recently posted about assembling another giant Gigapress, and the assumption is that this is the second Cybertruck Gigapress they are assembling for Tesla prior to it making its way to Giga Texas for true production. It's exciting to see the machines to build the machines in progress. Hopefully this truly leads to mid-2023 Cybertruck production. Rumors have said that we'll see 30 hand-built Cybertrucks this year, but most doubt this, and so far there has been nothing on that front. Next up today, EVs continue growing in popularity, and as such, we're seeing many shoppers switch away from brands that don't offer EVs. Tesla, Ford, GM, and Hyundai all offer EVs, and these are winning over Toyota and Honda gas vehicle buyers since neither of these companies truly have a great EV available to buy. Honda has yet to offer an EV in the US. US, and Toyota has been through a rough time launching the BZ4X. Both companies have been dragging their feet for a while, and it's starting to show. A new study from S&P Global Mobility is showing this preference towards EVs, noting all the gas cars customers are trading in. The top gas cars traded in for the Model Y were the Lexus RX, Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Honda Odyssey, and Honda Accord. For the Model 3, it was similar. The Mach-E was the Toyota RAV4, Honda CRV, and Jeep Wrangler, and the Ionic 5 included the Mazda to CX-5 and Subaru Forester. As you can see, most of the gas vehicles being traded in are from companies with no electric option available in the US. If you like your Honda but want to go electric, you basically have to go with Tesla, Ford, GM, or Hyundai. It's really starting to show, and it will be interesting to see this trend continue as more EVs get released. Speaking of Toyota, they do have EV plans, even though they're taking longer than they should. Recently, they announced their plans for five new fully electric models to join the BZ4X overseas by 2026. They hope that these options will accelerate their goal of being 50% electric by 2030 and carbon neutral by 2040. One of these BZ concepts was unveiled at the LA Auto Show, and these vehicles should be coming out in the years to come. I'm happy to see it, but really hope we see improvements to the products and see these cars actually released before it's too late. One exciting product from Mercedes is their upcoming refresh to the e-sprinter. An independent test of this vehicle, Ana 
real world route, found that they could travel 475 kilometers or 295 miles on a charge, with 20 kilometers or 12 miles remaining at the end of the trip. That means it was getting an efficiency of about 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. This is extremely good efficiency and would mean the battery pack size might be around 110 kilowatt hours. This is over double the range of the previous East Sprinter, which is a great improvement, but it does raise some questions. That efficiency is better than many smaller EVs and doesn't seem possible, so we'll have to wait to hear what final specs are when this van is officially unveiled by Mercedes in February. Production is scheduled for the second half of 2023, and they're rumored to be making vans with 60, 80, and 120 kilowatt hour battery packs. In the US, these would be assembled in South Carolina, which should qualify them for the revised EV tax credit. Over at Rivian, they signed a new power purchase agreement to source 50 megawatts of clean electricity from Apex Clean Energy. Rivian plans to use this and its other renewable energy initiatives to power up to 75% of its normal Illinois factory. For this, Rivian said, quote, about a third of global greenhouse gas emissions come from transportation, with nearly another third from electricity generation. We have a tremendous opportunity at Rivian to help tackle emissions beyond the tailpipe to support decarbonization of manufacturing and charging of electric vehicles. LG Chem is planning to build a $3 billion cathode factory for EV batteries in Tennessee. This will be located in Clarksville and will be the largest of its kind in the US. It's expected to produce 120,000 tons of cathode material annually by 2027, which should power around 1.2 million EVs with a range of 310 miles. They chose the location because of, quote, its proximity to key customers, ease of transporting raw materials, and cooperation from state and local government. They plan to use this as a supply chain hub where they'll work with Tesla, GM, and others. This battery factory should be a big step for ensuring EVs from multiple companies can access lots of battery supply in the future. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the price cut Tesla is offering for the Model 3 and Y this month, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.